Right now is the absolute worst time to buy an iPad. Everyone, welcome to the All Future Podcast, where we talk about technology coming in the future, including iPads that are coming very soon. If you're into that sort of thing, please consider giving us a subscribe. We just broke a thousand subscribers, which uh, we've nice. only been doing this like a month and a half or so. So Sweet. I feel pretty good about that. That's yeah, pretty that's cool. Great. So thank you, the 1,000 yes, plus thank people you. who have subscribed and are enjoying the videos. New iPad Pro models coming uh, probably mm -hmm. the end of this month, early next month. What's going on? The rumor is that they're going to be coming in just like a press release like they just did with the upgraded MacBook Airs. So it's supposed to come end of March or early April, and they're going to release kind of a whole new suite of iPads across the board, new iPad Airs and new iPad Pros. I think off the bat, something unusual about this or starting to be more common is not doing an event for it. Yeah. The MacBook kind of press release makes sense. Apple's done that in the past a lot where it's kind of, it's a spec bump really is what it is. Mm -hmm. But some rumors with these iPad Pros, some fairly significant design changes for them. Yeah. And not having an event for that is unusual for Apple. Uh, I can think of in recent memory, the AirPod Max didn't have an event, I want to mm -hmm. say. That was just kind of like a what, 3 a.m. press release or something yeah. that came out. Where's Apple's head in terms of their marketing here is kind of a little bit different than they normally do. And maybe they realize that, oh, we don't need to do these big events every single time mm -hmm. and we still sell the same amount of product or whatever. According to uh, Mark Gurman, who is... Uh, very famous Apple kind of leak guy and has been for years. Either the end of this month in March or early April, they're just going to release these new iPads, but there's going to be some differences in them. What's changing? So first, they're going to have two new ones, and the upgraded bigger one is supposed to be a little bit larger on the screen size. It's unclear if they're increasing the size of the iPad itself or just reducing the bezels. It's going to have M3 chips which I have some questions if <laughs> that means this is the best iPad ever for AI because that's, <laughs> oh, what, the MacBook, right. so, that's what the MacBook yeah, Air is yeah, because yeah. it has the M3. Right. OLED displays, so mm -hmm. that's kind of a really big one. That seems like something they would love to show at the event mm -hmm. and show a little diagram of pixel density or mm -hmm. something, somehow showing how OLED is so much better. Uh, thinner enclosure than mm -hmm. before. And then one big one I think for a lot of people is a landscape-oriented front camera. So right now, I'm actually looking at an iPad Air. Nope. It's iPad Pro, iPad I believe. Pro. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm looking at the full size, like 13 inch, whatever it is, iPad Pro. And if I were to take a FaceTime call, I'd probably do it like this wide orientation, but the camera is off to the left side because it's at the top of the landscape oriented iPad. So they're looking to finally change that to have it in the middle of the landscape orientation. This I think is indicative of probably Apple's research of how people are actually using iPads. Definitely. And it seems, especially after the introduction of the Magic Keyboard for the iPad, the iPad has really become more of a hybrid laptop device than a tablet device for a lot of people. Almost everyone who's doing video calls on their iPad, very few people I feel like are holding it like you know, up like it's a book, like they're mm -hmm. putting it on a desk. It's either in the keyboard, on the uh, the cover uh, stand, like you have your, your iPad set up here. So it's, it's designed for a tabletop, really in a lot of these use cases. Yeah. So this makes sense to switch to orientation of the camera. Like I was saying, it's also, I think, shows where Apple is going with this and what their thought is. And I think anyone who has looked at Apple and talked about Apple rumors knows that the Apple product roadmap is eventually the combination of the iOS and the macOS system. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's been going. You see that no place more than with iPad. And now you're seeing it in macOS even because Things that were first in iPad, uh, Stage Manager, for example, then got sent over to Mac. Mm -hmm. So now, if you really want to, you can set up your iPad so it seems like a Mac in a lot of ways. It's got mouse keyboard support. It can just plug into a screen. The screens now actually scale the resolution correctly. It used to be you would, you would still have like pillar boxes for the aspect mm -hmm. ratio of the iPad. Now to fill out the screens. So this, I think, is just one more step in that evolutionary process for Apple to make their ultimate computer device, whatever you want to call yeah. it, the non-phone, non-AR, non-watch thing that Apple makes. What is that going to be? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be an iPad that feels a lot like a Mac in terms of its software and capabilities. Yeah, I think a lot of people have been kind of like, why haven't they made a touchscreen laptop yet or a touchscreen yeah. computer? And it's like, that's this. Yeah, they do. It's called an iPad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So other design changes are supposed to be a redesigned rear camera bump not that major i assume yeah um and also i think it's hilarious like i get it you have multiple camera lenses on the ipad and stuff for like i don't i don't know the use case 
other than the guy at the concert with the iPad. Yeah, that the, the, the everyone makes fun of or whatever. Exactly. Which it, at this point feels staged every time I yeah. see that. Like, <laughs> oh, someone's using an iPad to record something. It's like, oh, this is a fake scene to get yeah. cloud or whatever. It, but it's upgrading. Sure, great. The only time I use my back cameras is scanning documents. It's pretty good at that. That's, that, that's kind of a cool use case. The iPhone also does that, though. So yeah, exactly. a lot of times I'll use the phone scan capability. Mm -hmm. The LiDAR system, that's like, what, what exactly are we doing with that with iPads? I know there's a lot of cool demos of AR games and things like that using the LiDAR system or 3D design. Mm -hmm. Maybe more important as Apple moves to spatial computing or whatever you want to call what the Vision Pro has going on. Yeah, the back camera is kind of whatever. But yeah, it's one of those things they've got to just upgrade it to keep pace with technology. You don't want to have a five-year-old camera system in your in your iPad. That's one less reason for someone to upgrade. The last rumor is MagSafe wireless charging, which makes sense, but also I'm wondering where does... I was going to say, it, paint me a picture of this, man. Where, yeah. <laughs> where's the magnet? How does it work? How is this thing going to work? It's very clearly in the center of the back of the phone. Right. But on the iPad, is it like in a specific corner? I, I just don't picture... Yeah, and it's weird to use the phrase the MagSafe wireless charging, right? Mm -hmm. Because obviously Max have... MagSafe and it's the little detachable cord. Yeah. Is this not that? Is this more like the iPhone, like you're saying, where it's a, a magnet system and you can just dock your iPad onto something and starts charging without you having to plug in a cable, really? Mm -hmm. That seems pretty cool. I could see That's true. I can already see the So you could have a mount if it can hold mount. the weight. They already have magnet based iPad mounts out there that people can get to kind of replicate a iMac monitor kind of looking thing. Mm -hmm. So I could see if you integrated power into that as well. Again, if you're trying to replace traditional computing with an iPad and you just have kind of the stand on your desk and you just put your iPad on it. Now that's your screen and it's charging. It starts charging. It auto kind of connects to your mouse and keyboard. That seems kind of cool. It yeah. seems like a cool feature and something again that I feel like is on Apple's roadmap and wants to do and has been on Apple's roadmap since the 80s. Look at the original Mac. It's got a handle on it. You could buy a carrying case for it. Apple's vision was to move this thing around. The Apple IIc has a handle that comes out of it. So Apple has always had this idea of the ultimate portable computing device. Do everything like the singularity of computing, right? That's what they've been trying to do. And this is, I think, just one more evolutionary step toward that. And the a cool thing, I guess, about that, if you get a specific MagSafe iPad mount, it doesn't have to be designed for every iPad going down into the future now. Mm -hmm. It can just be as long as it has enough clearance or whatever and you dock it and they keep the MagSafe in the same spot, then all future iPads you get in whatever size, you can use the same mount and just mm -hmm. keep using it, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah, so now when we start talking about this, I was like, oh, MagSafe. But now, yeah. now that we're at the end, I was like, okay, yeah, I can see this. This is actually kind of cool. This, yeah. is, this would be a neat quality of life thing. And I'm an iPad guy. Uh, I, I use the iPad every single day. I have a, the smaller iPad Pro. You right, you have the bigger one on mm -hmm. here, 12 whatever inches it is. This kind of makes me want to get the bigger size. Are you, is this where you're at on this? Do you like the bigger size iPad? I do like the bigger size iPad. Uh, I'm also a musician, so I kind of bought this for reading sheet music sometimes. Mm -hmm. And the other one was smaller. But when I'm using it, it's really nice to have the big screen. But an interesting thing about that bigger screen size mm -hmm. is is the iPad Air rumors are that they're going to make two iPad Airs. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the first time we've seen this, right? I believe so, yeah. The first time they're going to essentially have a iPad Air Max. I don't know what, you, what, the, yeah. uh, what they're going to call it, right? And you've had the iPad Mini for a while, which on the small side. But if you want that larger, larger size, you had to go Pro. The iPad Air, it's kind of a, in a weird space in a little bit because I feel like what it does most of the time is cannibalize Pro sales. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who want an iPad and they're like, well, what is the Pro even giving me? And maybe some of these other features they're talking about, whether it's MagSafe, changing the camera, improving the back camera, all this kind of stuff. Maybe it's really more about differentiating it from the Air model and, and making it so where people pay for that extra two, $300 for, for the Pro. They're really gonna need to do that if you start offering Airs in different sizes as well. So it's apparently gonna have the basic stuff like an M2 chip and a landscape front camera as well for the big model. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that's actually probably gonna be extremely popular, a 12.9 inch iPad Air. Because right now, if you're like, okay, I'm in the market for an iPad at this price, so that's putting me at the iPad Air. Mm -hmm. But I, what if I went for the bigger screen? You have to upgrade to Pro mm -hmm. and then the bigger screen, which is a huge jump mm -hmm. from just the normal iPad Air. And now it's just like a couple hundred bucks to get the bigger screen and you don't care about all the Pro features. That's probably going to get a lot of customers. Absolutely. And this, I mean, I'm sure Apple sees this in on the phone side all the time. Like how many 
customers are like, oh, that extra hundred dollars for the bigger screen is not that big a deal to me, and I want the best thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you remember when they first released the uh, larger size iPhone, uh, they've called it a few different things over the years, plus Max. It originally had features that weren't even on the smaller size, the image stabilization on the camera, things mm -hmm. like that. So I think Apple knows that, hey, we can make a little bit more profit when we make just a, a larger device. It doesn't actually cost us that much more to make because a lot of the underlying tech is the same stuff mm -hmm. and we can charge an extra $200 for it. Two other exciting things are some accessories. One is a larger trackpad version of the Magic Keyboard. Mm -hmm. And then second is a, an Apple Pencil that will be upgraded. Has a couple interesting features. The first is magnetically interchangeable tips mm -hmm. are rumored. The second is color sampling from the real world. I, I got a lot of questions about that. <laughs> yeah, like apparently you can just, I don't know if it's, looking or if you're just tapping things but it said like taking a color sample from a flower in the real world and then you can draw with that color is it using the apple pencil as a pointing device and you're using the cameras on the ipad and it sees what you point at and then copies that color i think it's an actual thing on the tip of this the... seems crazy why would they like that's, that's a lot of technology to <laughs> add into this pencil like i mean you're putting some kind of photo sensor in there maybe it sounds cool i'm into yeah. it i use my ipad for art a lot so i draw my ipad a lot so I'm an Apple Pencil guy. I, I use Apple Pencil all the time. I do have replacement tips. I don't use the tips that come with the iPad. Mm -hmm. that come with the default pencil. I think it's too hard. It doesn't grip well enough. Making those magnetically swappable seem kind of cool. It's just a little screw right now. So I'm not seeing why you would need the magnet kind of part of it, right? Like, it, How long like, does it take you to swap? Two seconds. Like it literally, okay. you just, you unscrew the top and you put the other one and it screws back on. It does not take that long. So I wonder what the stability would even would be if you magnetize that system some kind of way. Cause it'd yeah. have to fit into it and then mag lock in some kind of way. I don't know. The, I do also lose pen tips a lot, swapping and keeping one out and doing stuff like that. So I'm sure if they make a magnetic, I'm gonna have to buy like 50 of these things cause I'm gonna lose them all the time time but a, a, a cool upgrade and yeah this will take the color works mm -hmm. sounds badass i just didn't know how it would work you know yeah the other two things are supposedly a shorter design and a gloss finish so we'll see if this is just the new apple pencil that replaces it or if this is the apple pencil pro because it has mm. color sampling it's made for artists mm -hmm. something like that but i do have a question matt so mm. for the m3 chips we mm -hmm. talked about that with the macbook airs mm -hmm. it was apple's biggest press release ever talking about <laughs> AI. Are they gonna, do you think they're gonna do that again here? Cause uh, this has the M3 chip. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, we'll, see, we'll see, maybe they, we, they won't risk being made fun of that much, but it, for you guys who didn't see our video about it or didn't see the press release, the press release for the M3 MacBook Air, I, we counted, I think it was like eight or nine times it uses the word AI in the press release within one paragraph. Yeah. Like, so it's aggressively uses the phrase AI. In theory, if the iPad Pro is running the exact same chip, it should be able to market it the same way. Mm -hmm. The best tablet for AI, which just seems crazy. I don't know anyone who's really doing onboard AI that is necessarily gonna, who's going to get an iPad. <laughs> but in more consumer-facing AI, uh, generative fill in Photoshop, for example, uh, that's obviously going to have an improved response if the processor performs better. I don't know if that necessarily makes the processor better for AI. It also makes the processor better for every Everything. single other yeah. task, but AI is included in every single task. So um, yeah, I'm sure they're going to market it something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, And also if you're a guy who uses AI and blah, blah, blah. Now with the M3, you can do generative fill with the portable version of Photoshop, whatever. Yeah. I made a list that I'll just rapid fire through of things Apple could do with AI. Because ultimately, like you were talking about, they want to make this package that mm -hmm. just works. You get an iPad and it's just like the old days with iLife where it's mm -hmm. like you have everything you need to mm -hmm. create. Mm -hmm. You know, So for Final Cut Pro, we could see some AI dubbing come mm -hmm. into there. We've seen that happen already where it's automatically translating what you're saying and then dubbing your lips. Mm -hmm. I think that technology is still fairly new, but we could see that come to both Final Cut or iMovie. Which right. both and, could and be, and on be clear iPad. when you, when you say dubbing your lips, it literally makes it so your mouth is moving differently. Yes. And that you are saying the words in another language. Uh, YouTube actually had a demo of this not that long ago that they, they, it was a public demo that they showed people that the idea is that you can make your videos available everywhere and that you're can translate it. This seems like an easy tech for Apple to integrate if they wanted to. Uh, we'll see what where they land ethically on this, you know. There's another tool out there called Boximator 
that is kind of like an AI animation tool where you give it a general path and then it figures it out. All of those things could be coming to iMovie or Final Cut. Those would be AI things that mm -hmm. would be built in and would need some power behind it. So we could see that come. Um, in Logic Pro, which is the music app, there could be AI synths or AI things mm -hmm. where it's figuring out, you give it a sound sample and it kind of figures out how to match it. And then basically everything that we see in Microsoft Copilot could be coming to Keynote numbers and pages mm -hmm. on the Apple side. Pretty good list. And I'm sure we're going to see a lot of kind of stuff you're talking about built into, into the overall iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS, especially in WD, WWDC in a couple months. They've got to announce some kind of here's our version of copilot like you're saying mm -hmm. here's our plan for ai here's how AI, we're going to start integrating ai into our services because they're going to get left behind if they don't like i mean I, I talked about the whatever ethical implications of changing mouth movements or whatever the problem is if you have a video editor software that does not do that you're not going to want it mm -hmm. right if, if final cut doesn't have this feature people are going to be like oh well i'm just going to use premiere that does have it or davinci or whatever i'm going to switch to other things so if they want to stay in these spaces across the board, from the creative apps to the productivity apps, they're going to have to integrate AI. And apparently the M3 chip is the one for it on the MacBook. So we'll see new iPads coming soon, both iPad Airs and iPad Pros. They might be the best iPads yet for AI. <laughs> yep. <laughs>